guys today I'm going to show you how to build this awesome cork board stay tuned I'm going to include a little timeline here feel free to skip ahead to the part that interests you the most there's a little bit of math I know it's exciting but if that doesn't excite you as much as it excites me go ahead skip that let's get to the build keep watching this is a pretty cool cork board Welcome back everybody. Okay, so my next project for this room is to get some cork boards made. This is what is happening in this room here. I got the sound panels done and I was going to put some cork boards right here. And uh, again on the other side, just above these desks. I measured the space out. We have about 15 inches by 39 inches times 2. Let's do that math. And that's assuming we don't have frame. 15 times 39 times 2, so I need 1,170 square inches without frame. If I have a frame, there's going to be less than that. So it's almost 1,200 square inches of cork for this cork board. I did some research, and apparently a cork covers 1.25 square inches on a cork board. That's laying it sideways. However, on this cork board, I want to design it so that the ends are showing on some. Now, if you factor that, um, that's going to be less. However, if you split that cork in half and use both halves as pieces, it cancels that out. So I need almost 1,200 square inches of cork. And the math is I need just under 1,000 corks. I went on eBay. I looked for some used corks. I do not want synthetic corks, and I don't want champagne corks because that's just going to screw up my layout. I have two boxes like this and inside are corks. I have plenty of cork I think. Just open this box and just find out the condition of these corks. Hmm, actually smells pretty good. <laughs> oh yeah. All right so we got some really good corks. We got some writing on the edges. We got red wine on a lot of these. These this looks like a new cork unused with a 2008 stamped on it. So these are the ends that I want to show. This doesn't have writing, so I would be using the edges. So that's a used cork. That must have been white. Yeah, we got some good coloring on these corks. Let's take a look at this box here. This looks like a nice lot. Wax on some of these, but red wine, yeah, that's what I want. I want some variety of cork. Well, that's a thick cork compared to the rest. Yeah, compared to this, I mean, like, that's a big difference in size. I have to pair these up when I lay out my board so that they're a little even. The next issue on the cork was I wanted to put a layout that was not so standard. And by standard, I mean, if you go on Google and you type in wine cork cork board, a lot of the layouts look the same. It's very basic looking. So I did a little research on uh, what kind of uh, patterns people use. The most standard pattern I found was this style here where this they would do this and then alternate it. Uh, the next style was like this where people would cut the cork in half of course and make it flush and just keep re repeating that pattern. Then I got to thinking uh, what kind of patterns can we use that are not so standard and then uh, I got to thinking well this it's like a brick basically a cylindrical brick. So I did some research into brick patterns and that led me into researching tile patterns and the pattern I favored the most that didn't have any kind of boring pattern it was called the Versailles. If you do a search for a Versailles pattern, this is what shows up on the images. That's a pretty good looking pattern. Now of course you can't shape cork like that, but that got me thinking I could break this down even more. I was thinking I was going to have some of these 8x8s as the round ends showing like this and then we have some of these going like this and go triples and I broke down the pattern a little further and came up with this kind of a design. Let me lay this out on here and show you what I'm up this to. This basically is the Versailles pattern and I've added a few more corks to the larger ones. Let me expand this a bit and show you what this is gonna look like after I repeat a few different tile sets here. And this is the tile pattern after four repetitions. Now of course this can be spaced much better. These corks are gonna be cut in half so that's gonna be level. It, you're gonna see the process but I'm just trying to get an idea of the layout. I want a unique layout where it allows some of them end to show, a lot of the sides to show, 
I want something that doesn't look repetitive and has quite a bit of interest. So this, to me, suits the bill. This looks beautiful. I like it. I love it, actually. I think I got it. the layout right here. It's tough to follow this map here. This looks like the winner to me. Uh, so what I have to do is sort through these corks and the very thick corks and the very thin corks just kind of eliminate and use the most standard cork size. Like this is nice, but I mean it is uneven. So we're going to try to even this up to make my life a little easier. I am trying to sort these corks out. The best way I decided to do this is with a plastic bottle. So what I'm doing is trying to sort these into three different boxes. These are too small, these are about right, and these are too big. If it passes through here without any friction, it goes dumped into this box. If it passes through and it hits the side, but it makes it through, it goes in here. If it cannot make it through this bottle, it's going into this box here. Basically, that's the three different sizes I'm trying to do. So, for instance, that fell all the way through without me touching it. So, that's for sure the first bottle. See, this one goes through, but it's a little bit of a challenge. Same here. Uh, that's That was questionable. Uh, for instance, this one. Nope. That one goes through. There was... There's a few in here that are just like this one here. There's no way that one's going through. So that one goes in the large container. Basically that's what I'm doing is sorting these three. Hopefully we get enough in this medium sized box to use. Just find out what we got. Basically what we have to work with here. I got a thousand of these to sort through. We sorted out 1,000 of these corks using these bottle tops, and uh, it wasn't cut and dry. I mean, there are some iffy choices here, whether it belongs in one box or the other box. Just kind of give an idea of what we have here, and this is the smallest box. Bottle tops just pass through. This was the medium size, and this one they cannot pass through. Over 50% of the corks are in the medium size, so I'm thinking I'm going to build one cork board entirely out of this. And then the other cork board, I'm going to use the leftovers and then try to pair a small size with a large size just to get the spacing properly. That's the idea, but I changed my mind through a lot of this stuff, so we'll see what happens. Today is Saturday, just got done mowing the grass, so I'm a little sweaty here, so it's hot out there. It's Florida, it's summertime. Today's project, I'm going to construct the frame of the cork board and try to get that stained. And then maybe tomorrow we can start the cork, maybe today, but we'll see. I'm going to take 10 of the average size corks, which was this box, and try to figure out what the width of an average cork is. And from that, I can determine the exact width and height of the frame I need to build in order to maximize the cork in the frame without slop on the ends that are looking out of place. I'm gonna custom fit it as best as I can. So this is my box of medium corks. I'm gonna take 10 random cork. 10 random corks. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, let's get a width of that. Let me just show you what's going on here. This cork is not going to work for my purposes. It's got quite a flaw. So let's grab a different one. Just a random one. Ten. Get a length on that. It's like eight point eight and three eighths. Let me just line this up against the wall. Try to get an exact. Actually, uh, yeah, 8 and 3 eighths is the length of 10. 0.8375 inches per cork. So the width of this is just a little over 14 and a half, probably a three quarter inch frame because my wood is three quarter inch thick. So I'm gonna lay it sideways and then rip it. <coughs> a three quarter inch thick. If we max out at 40 inches, it'll be fine. So that would equal 38.5 inches of usable space after the frame. 13 inches divided by 0.8375 is 15 and a half corks wide. This is what I'm calculating because uh, that half a cork, I'm not going to use that half a cork. So we're going to go 15 corks wide, 15 times decimal 8375. We're going to have 12.5. 5625 inches wide. 
before the frame. That's what I want between the two frame pieces. And as for the 38 and a half inch tall, divided by decimal 8375, we got 45.97. Oh, I don't want to go 46. I do not want to make it any taller than it is. I measured the max. So instead of going 46, I'm going to go 45 quarks high. So 45 quarks high times decimal 8375 is 37.6875 inches between the frame. I know what I'm working with. I'm going to take those two measurements, add the inch and a half to each dimension and cut my pieces at those lengths. And I'm going to construct a jig so that I can just pop the cork on there, slice it, and get a nice uniform depth across all the corks, thick or thin, so that when I put them onto the board, all the corks are pretty much as level as I can get within reason. Well, I want it to be flush with the frame. Yeah, I want it to be nice and flush with the frame. So maybe I'll cut them so that they're all 11 sixteenths inch thick. I also want the cork to be two thicknesses wide. So 0 0.8375 times two. I want 1.675 inches on each and every cork so that I can get a good mix of cork sitting sideways and cork sitting flat and uh, not have wasted space between corks. Gonna be a nice uniform look to it. When I bought these corks, I had planned on them being an inch and a quarter of coverage to get my entire cork board filled, and that's why I bought a thousand corks, because I just wanted to have enough. Now I've determined that the size that I'm going to cut these, they're 0.8375 inches wide, and I'm going to cut them twice the width, the ratio of 2 to 1, exactly, 1.675 inches long by 0.83. 75 inches. Each cork is going to cover 1.402 inches in service area this way, which is more than the inch and a quarter that I had expected. So we're good. These are almost two inches long, some of these. Some of them are more, some of them are shorter. I was concerned that I didn't buy enough corks, but according to my math, and I hope my math is right, I should have an adequate supply of these corks. The backer board, I believe, is a quarter inch thick. If you add that 11 16th plus the quarter inch, we have a 15 16th inch thick frame with a three quarter inch wide frame. Okay, so I got my Craig jig set up on my circular saw and I ripped this to just a little over 11 16th. I think we can definitely work with that. This side is trash and then I'm going to cut some pieces here. The length of the corks are going to be 1.675 inches. That does not translate into a nice even 16th. That is 1 and 10.8 sixteenths. So I'm just going to cut my jig just a smidge under 1 and 11 sixteenths. To construct this jig, I'm going to put them in this piece of wood here. I'm taking the side I ripped and putting two starter holes and the smooth sides are out. Well, they're starting holes. I don't want anything to split when I attach to the jig. And I'm going to count sink each of these holes as well. So two of these pieces are to the exact same length and the third is not the same. Now to construct this jig, I'm going to get it the width of a cork apart, and this is going to go on the end. Let's put this one out first, because the other two pieces are going to have to butt up square to it. I want those screw heads to be below the surface, because I'm going to be running a blade, and I don't want it to interfere with the blade. That went down a little too far, but whatever. That's about the length I want the corks, which happens to be two widths. The thickness I want my frame to be is going to be basically the thickness of the cork plus the thickness of the backer board. So basically, this thick. So I'm going to try ripping these about an inch thick. And with the tools that I got, I'm not going to be 100% accurate, but these are the tools I got. A, I don't have that much money, and B, I don't have space for all kinds of fancy tools. Sometimes I wish I had a nice garage. I could put all kinds of tools in. Yeah. 
That's about where I want it. Right about there. So we're gonna rip this all the way across. I might as well rip all three of my pieces of wood. Good, good. Keep going with the other two pieces. So what we have here are three pieces of wood. The three smooth sides. And then the one rough side I just ripped. I suppose I could sand it. This is the, gonna go against the wall anyways. So I'm not too concerned about it. So what I need to do is get a router and route a groove all the way down one quarter inch thick. Let's adjust the depth here. My objective here is to get quarter inch depth. Good. So I can't really get the ends uh, with my setup, but I mean. These are the tools I got. I got a channel down all three of these. Measure my first piece and just keep going here. Just measure pieces out. I'm done cutting pieces. Now, this is the basic frame. I've got two of these. It's not nailed together. I'm gonna have to use these finishing nails and nail it through the ends. I don't like having nails shown. I'm having a little difficulty here. I was originally going to get nails going in from both sides of the corners. It's just not working out well. So I changed my plans to just have nails going in from two ends and these ends are gonna be fairly concealed once the cork board is hung. This being about half an inch from the desk and the other end about half an inch from my shelf. So no Nobody's going to really be able to see these nails. These are just to keep everything in place. I'm going to glue the backer board into the groove. So hopefully the primary method that everything here is going to stay together is going to be the glue. And I have pretty good confidence that it's going to hold up well. I have both of these glued and sitting a little bit of weight on them. I also squeeze the sides of the frame in a little just to square it up a little. I'm just hoping the glue doesn't go too crazy on the inside, dripping down and sticking it to the floor and getting to the point where if I stain it, it's not going to stain properly. So I made this little jig and it is the length of two corks wide. As you can see. So what I'm doing is I'm cutting each cork down to the length of two cork wide. Man, I don't know what I'm saying, but basically I'm doing it, putting the cork in there. It fits in there nice and snug. Um, this is not as snug as... <sighs> don't know. I don't mean no English today. I purposely did not make it this snug. It just happened to be like perfect fit. I put the cork in there, cut it down to the proper length here. And all these scraps are going into a box of scraps. Once that is done, I saw off the top of the cork. And what is actually the top is actually the bottom. Now I'm getting a nice uniform height. And when I glue this flat end to the board, this is going to be the outside piece. And this is what you're going to see when it's all glued. For the ones that have nice decorative ends, you can cut both ends off. The exact same style here. Try not 
to mess up your fingers because they don't grow back. These are the corks I have managed to get down to a nice size. I've only gotten through part of the box. It's taken a long time to do. It's time consuming. So these are finished product and these are all scraps. So this is just stuff that's going to end up going in the garbage. So I'm just doing a test fit. See how well these fit. Make sure all my dimensions are correct. And so far it looks great. Everything is cut so perfectly that there's not going to be an awful lot of space in between all these when we're all done. This is loosely put together. It's probably 18 hours that these have been sitting. I was kind of expecting a little more glue dripping on the inside, but these ended up looking great. There's a little bit of glue on the inside of the panel, but cork is going to cover all of that. So today we're just going to have these stained and uh, start fitting cork in here. Just doing a little bit of placement to see how well I had calculated my dimensions. This is complete random placement. This has nothing to do with the actual pattern that I'm going to be doing. First thing I noticed was that this is a little too much room here at the end. So maybe my jig was cutting a little short or something, I'm not sure. And I thought my frame was going to be quite a bit more flush with the cork and it's, it's actually sticking up about a, about a sixteenth of an inch-ish, something like that. It's not what I expected, but I think we can work with that. My cork board is 15 cork halves wide by 46 cork halves tall. So the 15 times the 45 is 675 cork halves. I'm doing two cork boards so that cancels each other out. We're dividing by two. That's 337.5 corks per board times two boards. 675 corks. I don't know how I came up with needing about a thousand corks. Well, I came up with that because I thought there was only going to be 1.25 square inches of coverage and my last calculation uh, says it covers 1.4 inches. I'm going to have excess cork, which is good because um, I sorted out those corks and we have three different sizes. We had the medium box, which comprised about, I'd say about 60% of the volume, which is awesome because it looks like about 67% of that is what I'm going to need. And then we had two other little boxes, a box of little corks and a box of bigger corks. And I was trying to think in my head how to get all those corks to interact with each other without going crazy on the sizes. That's a pleasant surprise. That's awesome. That means I'm going to have to figure out an, either another project with those corks or just sell them on eBay or something. I'm going to sand these down. As you can see, there's little bits of glue on the edges, a little bit of fingerprints few imperfections. The corners aren't exactly the best. Just going to sand these down before they get stained. I don't feel like going to Lowe's or Home Depot. I dug around and all I got is a 120 grit drywall screen. Don't judge me. That's what we're going to be using to get this sanded somewhat. Just, you know, just getting rid of some of these fingerprints. Rounding the corners a little bit. If you wanted a nicer finish, you would definitely want to use different sandpaper. 120 grit is just way too aggressive for a nice finish, but uh, I think for the purposes of this project, it would be just fine. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's really aggressive. So that's even scratches here and there, but I kind of am going for a little bit of a rustic look here. Slightly rustic. Shut up and sit down.
I've cut a few hundred of these corks. I've got uh, probably 120 to go maybe. This is all my scraps. I filled up this bucket with more scraps than I thought I would have. This cutting block, this is doing alright. However, I've noticed <laughs> it's really rounding out. I should have used something better than just pine. I should have used a hardwood or melamine or something like that. But it's really getting a rounded edge on this. So I got to be careful to trim it a little more square. And it's getting rounded here too. I'm still using it as a guide, but I'm not using it as a 100% accurate template because it is not perfect at all. It's it's looking rough. Really rough. The medium-sized corks. We were about approximately 20 corks short, so I told my wife to dig through the small corks and the large corks, and we're going to get about 20 of the different size corks to complete this project. These ones are just really wide compared to the other ones. As you can see here, they don't fit into my jig at all, so the way we're cutting these is like this. Basically, I'm putting it on the top and then just kind of visually looking at the length. Cutting it down to length. And then as for the depth, I put it next to the block and I'm just starting it here. I gotta be careful because now I'm cutting with my left hand and uh, I'm not comfortable with that because I could slip so easily. Now that I know the depth, I'm kind of just slicing away without any kind of guide here. And then just double checking. So that's, that's pretty good. And then when I'm laying it out, I can't put two of these next to each other. I'll have to put this next to a smaller one or just something. Surprisingly, I got this much scrap. I didn't know I'd have that much scrap. That's a lot. The entire box of scrap. That was exhausting. That was a quite a few hours to cut all those down to the size. And this is the condition of my block after. It's in rough shape. Really rough shape. But uh, it did the job. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick little layout. Try to follow my chart. spend a few hours putting the pattern together. This is what mine looks like. I've got a bag of glue sticks in. bag of 200 glue sticks. I've started gluing about 10 rows or so and it's gone through about 10 to 12 glue sticks so I figure it's going to take close to 100 glue sticks to get all two boards. Um, so one thing I'm doing is I'm making sure not to glue on this most cornermost end piece and this one as well. The reason is I'm going to mount this to the wall directly with screws and once that's done mounting I'm going to use these to cover the screws. Alright, so I got these two cork boards constructed somewhat. I left the corners out. 
And for my future reference, because I might need to take these down in the future, is this cork, this cork, this cork, and that one on this board. And on this board, I left this one empty, this one empty, this one empty, and that one empty. So I'm going to start by drilling pilot holes in on all four of these with a 1 8 bit and I'm going to countersink them a little bit with a countersink. I'm going to drill four inch holes to anchor these wall anchors. wall anchors and I countersunk each of these uh, holes and I'm gonna screw it to the wall okay, so now I have these screws behind all these and I'm gonna take the glue gun and I'm gonna seal all these Corks online. I just got a random bunch, but it seems that there's a few corks here that are kind of cool. Like, do you want to talk about what you've done to your board here? No? <laughs> there's a lot of things, like for instance, there's one with my name, G I L L E S. So my wife cut that out and we put it into her board. Got my initials here as well, G D. I think our year. Oh, no, that's not our year. Our year of marriage, uh, 2002. We incorporated that as well. And when we started dating was 2001. Hmm. So I did a 2001 here and a D here. That was a D at some point. M for our daughter Miracle. I couldn't find a Z for our daughter Zasha. So this was the year she was born. And then the heart here. I like the nine ants too. That's kind of has nothing to do with anything, but I'll just show you what. So yeah, on mine, I I have my initials. Uh, that over here, G and D, and I put the nine hats. Put it there because my hat is pretty kind of cool. So we didn't have any J's. Yeah, we don't have any J's. Um, everything else here is random. I didn't do anything really special with my board. Um, I think we you included a dog in this. Yeah, we got oh dog just. Yeah, there was two dogs. Well, there's one there and that. No, in with in here, ah, in with our yes, one right here, yeah. With our dates. It's just kind of yeah. Cool. Oh, I also put that in there with our dates because I liked that one. Hmm. All right, I've added a few hooks to this cork board uh, so you can add keychains and trinkets and I got keys on mine. My wife's got things on hers. 
If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to my channel, comment anything below. I like to read your comments and respond to them. If you want somebody else to build this cork board for you, share this video with them. See if they'll be interested in doing that project for you. And uh, I've got a little Amazon wish list. If you want to buy me something, that'd be pretty cool. I'll give you a shout out in my next video and uh, keep watching. I've got other interesting videos for you to watch. Thanks.